Okay, welcome back. This video, we're going to be talking about the vertebrae, uh, some of the distinguishing features on each of the vertebrae, how to tell which of the vertebrae we're looking at, and how many of each type there are. So first, in this view, you can see there are several different looks that a vertebra can have, but in this view, all of them are facing the same way. So here, across the bottom of this picture, this is the posterior side of the vertebrae, and across the top, this is the anterior side. So if you were to run your finger down someone's backbones, this at the bottom is what you would be feeling down the middle of their back. So first, uh, just a couple of things that are common features among most of the vertebrae. When we look at these vertebrae, all of them, except for this one on the far left, which we'll look at in just a moment, all of them have this kind of point that sticks towards the posterior side of the vertebrae. This is called the spinous process. The spinous process. And again, that's what you feel when you run your finger down the middle of someone's back and feel what we often call their backbones. Now, another common feature is this large hole right in the middle of the vertebrae. This is called the vertebral foramen, and all of the vertebrae will have that feature. That is actually what the spinal cord passes through from the brain down through most of the vertebrae. Another common feature are these projections that stick off to the left and right of each of the vertebrae. These can be very large, like we see on this vertebrae here, or they can be very small, like we see on this vertebrae here and here. These are called transverse processes. Transverse, off to the side, process, is just a feature that sticks off of a bone and tends to come to a point. We saw several of those on the skull. So those are some common features among the vertebrae, but as we look at individual vertebrae, we'll talk about some more features that we can see. Over the next several slides, I'm gonna be talking about how to distinguish parts of the vertebrae and how to tell which type of vertebrae you're looking at. So here I'm going to introduce a couple of terms that, or a couple of items that we'll be using to distinguish between the different type of vertebrae. The first way to tell what type of vertebrae you're looking at is to count how many holes there are. And the option is always either going to be one or three. So here on the left, this vertebrae has one, two, three holes. The second vertebrae has one, two, and then from this angle we can't see it, but there's another hole here, so that has three. Over here on the right, we see a hole here. We see a hole on the second vertebrae here. So those have one hole. Now I've taken a top view, which is what's in this box up here at the top. Here we see a vertebrae that has one hole, but then this vertebrae we have one hole, and then some holes in this part right here. Well, this part of the vertebrae, this very large roundish part, that's called the body of the vertebrae. And that should not have any holes in it at all they should all look like what we see right here. But on this vertebrae on the right, we see that there are holes in that vertebrae. What that means is at some point, these vertebrae were mounted either on a rope to keep them all together or on an assembled skeleton. So if you see holes in the body of a vertebrae, that is to be ignored. We don't count that. 
So for example, this one, if we were to look at it, we see a hole here, a very small hole here, a hole here, and maybe a hole here. Well, four holes is not an option. Immediately we can discard that. Really this vertebra has one hole and that hole is the vertebral foramen. So now we've counted our holes and maybe we find that our vertebrae that we're looking at has three holes in it. All three of these vertebrae have three holes each. Maybe the angle, we can't really see them all, but here on the left, here's that large vertebral foramen. Here's a hole here on this side and a hole here on this side. In this second vertebra, here's a large hole here, a small hole here, and then again, one that's hidden underneath right here. On this vertebra on the right, we have the large vertebral foramen, a small hole here, and a small hole here. So all three of these vertebrae have three holes. Automatically, without bothering to think what shape are they, what do they look like, if they have three holes, they are by default cervical vertebrae. It doesn't matter what they look like. If they have three holes, they are cervical vertebrae. Cervic means neck. So these are the vertebrae that make up your neck. Now, we're gonna look at each of these individually and talk about the structures, the markings on each one of them. So what we're looking at here is cervical vertebra number one, or C1. This is one of two of the vertebra that we will actually give special names to. This is called the atlas, A-T-L-A-S, the atlas. And if we think about history, mythology, a lot of us may be familiar with a picture of this man who's holding the earth on his shoulders. That man's name is Atlas, and Atlas held the world on his shoulders. Well, here we can think this, the Atlas, got its name because the Atlas holds your skull up. Now this Atlas, we're looking at it from beneath. We're looking at the inferior surface, but the superior surface looks very similar. There are these two large structures here. From this view, these are called the inferior articular facets. On the other side, they're a little bit more curved and they're called the superior articular facets. Well, the superior ar articular facets are what the occipital condyles from the bottom of your skull sit on. So this is the atlas, it holds your skull up. Some features that you need to know, again, down here at the bottom, this is the posterior side. So this part right here, right in the middle on the bottom of this picture is called the posterior tubercle. And straight across from it here at the top in the middle, this is the anterior tubercle. A tubercle is just a small swollen part of bone. It actually has its roots from something called a tuber. A tuber is what we'd often call a root vegetable, like a potato, and they're usually swollen. Well, C-L-E at the end of a word typically means little. So this is little tuber, little swollen area. This is the posterior tubercle and the anterior tubercle. We've already mentioned on each side, there is a transverse process. Right in the middle is the vertebral foramen, but here we have two more holes, one on each side. These are transverse foramen, and those are identifying features for cervical vertebrae. Only cervical vertebrae have transverse foramen. Here we see cervical vertebra number two. This one also has a name. This is the axis, A-X-I-S, the axis. And the axis is really identifiable because it's got this kind of stick that points upward 
here on the anterior side. That stick that points upward is called the dens. And the dens projects upward through the atlas. And when you turn your head no, well, your head rotates on its axis here on the dens. So that's how we can think of atlas holds your skull up, your head rotates on its axis on the dens. That's a way to keep those names straight. Some features here that we need to know. We need to know that it is called the axis. We need to know that this structure here is the dens. These two kind of flat round areas here are the superior articular facets. That's what the inferior articular facets on the atlas sit on. We also have a spinous process on the opposite side from the dens. We have very small transverse processes. We see one clearly on this side. It's hidden, but we can see it's on the other side also if we were to rotate it. And we have transverse foramen, one on each side, and a large vertebral foramen. We've now seen cervical vertebra number one, the atlas, number two, the axis, but all of the remaining cervical vertebrae will look relatively like this picture here. They will be maybe a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, and parts of it will be a little more or less elongated, but they will have this same kind of overall structure. And what we see here, we have the body, transverse processes, one on each side, transverse foramen, one on each side, the vertebral foramen, large right in the middle, and then pointed this way, the spinous process. All of the cervical vertebrae, except for one and two, will have those features. So now we've covered the cervical vertebrae, let's move on to the other types of vertebrae. Here, we can see most of the same features. Here we have a large structure here called the body. This large hole, again, is the vertebral foramen. Sticking off to each side are the transverse processes. Here from the front, we can see the transverse processes. And then sticking towards the posterior side or the bottom of this picture, this is the spinous process. And again, from the front, here's the spinous process. So we said that if it has three holes, it's a cervical vertebra. But if it has one hole, it could be either this type that we're looking at called a thoracic vertebrae, or it could be something called a lumbar vertebrae. So how do we know? How do we tell which one is which? Well, that then goes to what does it look like? Hopefully, if you see this shape here, here, and this kind of elongated, what looks like a face, it gives you the idea of a giraffe. Now, some people say elephant, and if that's what you see, go with it. For me personally, I always saw a giraffe. Here's an ear sticking to one side, an ear sticking to the other side, those weird little soft antler looking things. There's this long nose, his long muzzle. Looks like this giraffe here in the picture. So if it has one hole and it looks like a giraffe, it's a thoracic vertebrae. And I know this is kind of a stretch, but I always thought the word giraffe and thoracic kind of had a rhyme to them a little bit. So that's how I made that association. Now to kind of drive home a point, these two vertebrae, they kind of look the same. They both kind of have that weird giraffe look to them, except the one on the left is a cervical 
The one on the right is a thoracic, so how do you keep them straight if they both have that giraffe look? Well, remember, the one on the left has three holes, and it doesn't matter what it looks like. If it has three holes, it is automatically a cervical vertebra. Now we move to the last type uh, that we'll look at individually. This is a lumbar vertebra, and this is what makes up your lower back. All right, so here again, we see a body. Up here, we see a body. Sticking off to each side is a transverse process. Right in the middle, the large hole where the spine passes through is the vertebral foramen. And then the long part right here, right here, that is the spinous process. And again, this has one hole, doesn't really look so much like a giraffe, so how do we know which one this is? Lumbar vertebrae tend to look like a moose. So here in this view of the top right, we can see here are some antlers sticking up and there's that long kind of blunt muzzle, kind of like the antler sticking up here and the long blunt muzzle. So if it looks like a moose, it's a lumbar vertebrae and moose lumber through the forest. Okay, a little cheesy, a little corny, I know, but those kind of things tend to stick with you. That was how I learned these. Now, the final thing that you need to know is how many of each type of vertebra are there? Well, up at the top, we have seven cervical vertebrae. We have 12 thoracic vertebrae. A pair of ribs attaches to a thoracic vertebra. That's why there are 12 of them, because we have 12 pairs of ribs. Down here in the lower back, there are five lumbar vertebrae. Now, I also said there were some others that we would not be looking at individually. That's because they're fused. There's right here, we have the sacrum, which is about five vertebrae that are fused. And then what we often call the tailbone, these are the coccyx, which again are also about three or four fused vertebrae. Interesting fact, when we're still developing, humans actually have tails just typically before birth, that tail is reabsorbed and the remnant is the coccyx. It is not unheard of for that tail to not be fully reabsorbed and sometimes humans are born with a little bit of a tail. Okay, so how do you remember how many of each type of vertebra there are? Well, for the cervical, think breakfast. For the thoracic, think lunch. And for the lumbar, think dinner. We have breakfast at seven, lunch at 12, dinner at five. And that tells us how many of each type there are. Breakfast at seven, seven cervical vertebrae. Lunch at 12, 12 thoracic vertebrae. Dinner at five, five lumbar vertebrae. And that's how we can keep those straight. So that's it for the vertebrae video. I hope this helps. I hope you get your hands on some of these vertebrae in lab so that you can better prepare yourself for the exam because you will have some of these vertebrae sitting out without the other vertebrae around and you'll be able to, or you need to be able to identify any of the things that we've talked about in this video.